Hello everybody, another video for PTG football. This time I'm going to literally walk through the rules with uh, some of the play types, um, some of the more not as uh, frequent, a little bit more advanced play calls. Uh, I'm literally going to walk through the rule book with you, um, with them. So if you have your rule books, PDF or print, please follow along. If you don't, Please buy it and follow along. So, all right, so we're going to scan down here and we're going to look for things that are a little different. Okay, so page eight talks about the pistol of the shotgun. So the pistol of the shotgun, the way you, way you designate that on the, the display is you just basically move the quarterback back some. Okay, it doesn't really matter how much. Um, you know, there is actually graphics that the, the graphics is actually grass. If you look at it closely, you'll actually notice it's a, it's actually grass. So you could use like one one space is the pistol, two spaces right back to the yard line is the shotgun, right? Is there designation or something, right? Or you could use this and say Hey, that's pistol. Hey, that's shotgun, or whatever, right? Whatever works for you, whatever works for you and your opponent, right? So, um, pistol and the shotgun. What they what they can potentially do for you is The pistol can help you if the if your opponent calls a um, a run defense against a quick pass and you're in a pistol, it's a plus three of the completion range. Um, now, if you're in a pistol and they call a pass defense, just a regular pass defense, then it's minus five to the quick. It's plus three of the short, plus five to the long. Um, if you're in a if your opponent calls a prevent defense and you're in pistol, that's minus five to the quick, plus three to the short, plus five to the long. If they're on a blitz, it changes the pass rush battle value by minus one or plus one, depending on the blitz of the pass rush. Um, the shotgun modifies that slightly. So uh, if your quarterback's in the, you know, you call the shotgun and your quarterback's in the, in the shotgun and it's a minus five to the quick, um, or plus two of the short and long, depending on pass or prevent. Okay, uh, a rollout again, we, we've discussed that, that's plus two. If you decide to roll out and you get into a, a pass rush battle, then it's plus two to the battle. You're gonna keep keeping your guy from getting sacked, hit or hurried, is really what you're doing, mostly there. Okay, so there is a five wide receiver set. So instead of having Instead of having, so this guy would be off because he's back too anyway. You'd have this guy off and you'd have, you know, whoever the fifth receiver is in in the back position. Uh, three tight ends. If you put a tight end in... Right? So if you wanted to, like, power run... You put in a second tight end, take out the flanker. That's a power tight end position. That's two tight ends side by side. What you have to do is you have to designate one of them as the receiver, one of them as the runner, or as the as the blocker only. So in this case, you put Rudolph on top. That designates to say, I have two tight ends in the formation, but if I throw, it goes to Rudolph, not to Conklin. And if the if a running play is called and it calls for in this case it'd be the right end, so let's say it's uh, right tackle and right end, then you'd look at the right tackle plus three. These guys combined, no matter what their values actually are, become a plus four. So it's the same thing as double team blocking. It's just using tight ends in that respect. Um, a passing play is a designated blocking tight end. So in this case, Conklin would add one to the pass blocking value. If it was became a team pass rush battle, not the individual battle. Okay, we already went through spread, designed wallet, where we talked about clutch passing, we talked about in the last videos. 
Um, I'm going to spend just a couple more moments. I did in the last video. I kind of fumbled a little bit. I admit it. I realized as soon as I stopped the video what I had kind of fumbled over, uh, which was the zone defensive calls. So um, the zone defense, uh, pass the cover two and the cover three zone. So what they're designed to do is they're designed to be the players literally covering a zone instead of as status pro and as this game did for so many years, um, status pro is based, based on a man-to-man -man pass defense only. And that's, as we know, that's not really how the NFL works. Um, so what the game does is the game says, okay, you know, offense, call your call your run or your, your pass, right? And these are who's going to be there, where the box is, and what kind of play they are defending against, right? And then what the what that is, there's no modifiers for screens, but there is for quick, short, or long, depending on who it is. Um, and the same thing is true for a cover three, is you're going to see who the defensive position is, what box it actually is, and then what kind of coverage duties they have. So in a cover two or a cover three, the middle linebacker in box H has quick pass duties, right? So if it's a quick pass, it's going to be him, right? It doesn't really, it supersedes another position call, right? So down here, right, you have inside and outside linebacker on the left side. F and G is where the boxes are. It's back to with the left tight end that's covered um, in that instance, right? Or in this instance, back one, right tight end, left tight end, et cetera. And then shorter long passes, no matter who it is, it's covered by these guys at minus 15 for short and long. And the cover three is basically the same thing. Um, so again, that's there's some uh, a cover two and a cover three. You have to have uh, four defensive linemen um, the, and the linebackers that are li listed on the boxes have to be in those boxes as the starting place. Basically, the game needs to determine that you have the player on the field and then they're, they're moving to a zone, right? And if you, if you looked at NFL plays, you'd see where they don't stand like right, you know, right there, they're moving. Um, Yeah, and that's basically that. Double, triple cover, pretty straightforward. Um, you have to have a certain number of uh, linebackers or defensive linemen on the, fee um, on the field. Um, most teams in the NFL, 60% plus of the time, now play in the nickel defense, which is five deep backs. So you're invariably double covering somebody. Um, and what I did for, what I did for Jacksonville was they're in a 34, they're in a base. What I would, because Dalvin Cook is a zero. Um, what I would probably do, depending on how they were playing, how it was playing out, is I'd probably take out one of the linebackers and put in another deep back, or maybe even slide one of the pass, slot cover guys back. They have a couple of slot cover type guys. You could slide back to to pass defend only, and then you know that would that would take care of some of the pass defense kind of thing. But what you basically do is you basically just pick the player card up and put him on top, and poof, there he's double covered. Or if you pick another one up and you put another one down there, that's triple coverage. That's the mechanics of how it's done, and it, it basically changes the value of the pass or prevent defense to um, something greater. So... All right, yeah, we'll take we'll take a couple seconds. We'll look at a an, an injury, at an injury call, or look at Z results. We'll call this video etc. and Z results. All right, so sake of argument, we pull this. It's a penalty. Okay, it says right at the bottom under Z results, penalty. So 
So the next thing you have to do is figure out who the penalty is on. So penalty on. It's either on the defense or the return. Obviously, it's a special team or not. So, okay. So in this case, it's on the defense. Now, in the back of the booklet is what I call the, the totals penalty table, which is the entire NFL. If you email us, um, we will send you the individual teams for the same tables. And that's actually in the thank you letter, I think, the thank you note that's attached to either the print or the PDF. So you can, you can do that. Um, it's just 32 more pages if you want them, you want them. If you don't, you don't. All right, so this is the penalty table. It's real penalties, uh, real explanations on the right, and the ranges. So depending on the type of play. So again, we said that's a defensive penalty. So for the sake of argument, we're going to say it is a, a, a run. It's, so the four categories are all plays except is category one, which is the majority of plays, as you'll see. Category two is short and long. Category three is punt and punt return. Category four is kick and kick return. So we'll say it's a quick pass. Okay, so 91. So you look down D1 because that's the all plays except. Go down to 91 and you find out it's unnecessary roughness. That's 15 yards and you know, you execute the rest of the play. All right. So, and you, of course, you have the kickoffs and the kickoff returns and you have offense and defensive penalties calls that way. That is penalty. Now for an injury. For an injury, we're going to say that we pulled an injury, Z, because if I, there are more penalties than there are anything else in the deck because that's just the way the NFL really is. So, sake of argument, we're gonna say we pulled an injury. All right, so then, again, you're gonna look down here at injury position, left guard. Okay, so Dakota Dozier is a 16 injury guy. So he's not going to get hurt for game plus. He's going to get hurt for some period of time inside the rest of this game. So go to the injury duration table. Flip another card. Read the number of 32. Look under 16. Find 32. Six plays. He'll be off six plays. So... You can put them aside, and I know people that put them aside and then take a coin and flip it up and back and forth and whatever, back and forth until they get to six plays, or however you want to do it. You, know, you can mark it on the timesheet or whatever. Whatever is the way for you. Okay, a fumble. So... I can't even randomly find. There's an injury, of course. Um, these cards are not the most shuffled either. I will tell you that. Um, I use them for reference more than anything else. Um, I don't get a chance to play the games. So, all right. So we'll just say it's a fumble. All right. So the way a fumble occurs is play call happens. And sake of argument, let's say that I pulled a, so Dalvin Cook, you can see, is a run thumb of 96 to 100. So let's say I pulled, instead of yardage, I pulled this card and this card said 97. I'd be like, oh, crap. It, you know, I'm not sorry, sorry, not instead of, instead of yardage. Um, you would pull it and you would say, you know, it's a Z. So the Z result, fumble, the ball handler has the fumble. Um, so I pull it and let's say, okay, um, you know, we, we have a fumble if it's in his range, right? So again, sake of argument, he's got a 96. Let's say I pull a 96. There's a fumble. Now, the interesting thing that to do is, was there a blocking battle on that particular play? So 
if there is a blocking battle, and a blocking battle is uh, an offensive versus a defensive play in this particular instance. So let's go back and find a blocking battle. And we'll say it was um, right guard versus C. In this case, that'd be a counter left. Okay. So right guard versus C. So all I care about is the C. So I look at the C and I say, is there a fumble adjustment? In this case, no, there's no fumble adjustment, but there could be. Um, there are some guys that have like an eight fumble adjustment um, who are going to cause that fumble range to go from 96 to 88. So sake of argument, say fumbles. Okay. So a fumble, you know, a ball bouncing on a field is a random occurrence. So it's literally a 50-50 check. So 50, you decide 50%, he fumble, 50% he doesn't. It's up to you which way of the thing. So we'll say that I said 50% he fumbled. Okay, so he fumbled, right? So now you say, okay, well, you know, player X, and we'll say in this case, it's this, the guy in box C, right, has the uh, fumble return, right? So <clears throat> it's a one to 10 check. So one to 10 random number. In this case, it's a seven. So you check the table down here, a seven is no return. You could actually 25 and then you roll again. And if it's a, on a one, again, you would score a touchdown. So that's the rumbling, bumbling, stumbling um, down the field play. So there's a fumble. Uh, we've done a penalty. We've done an injury. There's your Z's. Um, so let's see. We've done pass deflect in other videos. We've done maximum losses. We've done kickoffs um pretty much covered most of it what what you'll find in the instruction book is this so page four you'll find a sequence of play which the little steps and then you'll see that throughout the book as appropriate uh the step the football you know the, it's marked there step one step two etc through the book to show you each step. So the book doesn't follow uh, an offense defense. It follows a, here's how you're going to execute a play. Um, every single play is going to be executed in this particular steps. And here's what you need to do depending on the play. So you can put a player in motion. Um, Yeah, let's, um, actually, you know what, let's do, let's do two more quick plays. So, look them up so I don't do them incorrectly. So one of them is going to be a jet sweep. So the jet sweep is, so instead of an end around, they don't really do end arounds exactly in the NFL anymore. They do more of a jet sweep. So the jet sweep is really just for the right end, left end flankers to um, to run the ball. So first of all, they have to have a rushing column. So let's see here. And you're not going to find a whole lot of these guys with rushing columns. Um, it's like finding the, the, the running backs with the um, shorter long. You're just not going to find too many of them. In fact, I'm having a hard time finding anybody right now um, who actually has it. Uh, nope, thought I had one for a second there. Um, looks like it's possible that neither one of these teams actually has a player who officially does it. All right. So, all right. Don't really need it. It's, you know, so basically what happens is you call the jet sweep and then you choose the direction. 
uh, right or left. And it, it's um, you use the sweep, the right or left sweep. So a sweep left battle. So if I said, okay, I'm going to do a jet sweep with, you know, say Jefferson had a rush column, then that would be, you know, a sweep left. So the left end versus F and you would just follow the play out. Um, the difference is that there is no, so on an inside run, you have a maximum yardage loss on a sweep. You don't. So just like that, you do not have a maximum potential, uh, maximum loss of yardage. You can have, you know, this guy could be running around for 20 yards. Um, you know, huge loss potential. Not really, because really it's minus eight over here is the best you're going to get. Um, and then the, really the best you're going to, the worst you're going to get here is like a minus two. So the worst you're really going to lose is 10 yards. All right, so that's a jet sweep. Again, it doesn't happen very often. You'll find, um, and you can probably name the receivers off in your head of who actually does it you know, uh, with any regularity and then surprisingly fewer than you think. All right. So run pass option. So the run pass option is literally a play call that ha you, you make that right off the chart. Um, and then you're going to decide whether to have the quarterback keep or run the ball or hand off the running back or throw a quick pass to a receiver or back. Okay. So if he chooses run, so what happens is you mark, on the play call gone blind uh, you mark here literally on the uh, run pass option and then you mark whatever it's going to be up here so if it's a run um, you don't have to you don't have to directly choose it here so but you execute it as an inside run so you announce, hey, I'm going to sweep left, right? So you know, mark it up here if it, it's easier for you. But you execute as an inside run, okay? And you can run the quarterback. Now, the only ones who can run are the quarterbacks with rest rates. So this is really where your Cam Newtons and your Lamar Jacksons and those guys, uh, a little bit less of Kirk Cousins, you know, um, those kinds of guys will, will get the carries is this – RPO um, kind of play, or the Kyler Murrays of the world. Okay. Um, and then you just execute it as an inside run. You just, everything else that happens, happens as, as if it's an inside left or an inside right run. So if it's, if you're choosing a pass, then you mark down here, RPO, choose the pass type. Um, I'm sorry, not choose the pass type, I'm sorry, correct that. Choose the receiver, it's a quick pass, so you just choose the receiver. Um, and then it, you execute the play. Now, pass rush blitz are ignored, defensive calls are ignored. So if you flip the card and it comes up the pass rush, you ignore it, you flip another card. Um, and otherwise, it's just like any other play. Um, what, this is, what this is for... Is to just is to use the quarterback's running rate, um, so they get to run more out of an RPO style of offense. It also throws the defensive off because the defense doesn't know if you're going to throw or run. You know when you when you line up. That's the whole point of the RPO in in the first place is literally that deception at the line. So what you'll find though, so for defense, if you decide to run and it's a correct call, it's still a minus four. Uh, wrong is a minus two. Correct, uh, no key is also a minus four. Um, if you pass and you're in a pass, a standard pass defense, it's minus five, 20, I'm sorry, minus 25 to the quick um, or minus 10 to the short if you're in a prevent. Um, if you're in a pass defense and there's a pass rush, then it's a standard pass rush battle. If you're in a, if you do a run and you know, the RPO and you do the run against the blitz or the pass rush, it's plus four, um, also in addition to, so it's just like a, it's just like a draw in that, in that instance. 
So again, this is a, a way to kind of throw the defense defense off some in in uh, what you're trying to call. So yeah, I think that's pretty much what I was going to cover. So have a nice day.